everyone. Welcome back from break. We thought we would make your life amazing and um, start off our uh, talk today about immigration with a little video. Now, immigration is a really big deal for us after the Civil War. It's not just Americans attacking each other now. Now we have a whole new wave of people coming into our country that we have to add to the mix and deal with too. So immigration skyrockets or goes up really high after the Civil War all the way until 1900. Everyone wants to come to our country. So that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to walk you through what type of people come, why did they leave their country, and then um, how they can get into our country. So why would all of these people decide to leave their country, um, which is a pretty difficult feat to start completely over in a new country. Um, so a couple of the reasons are a lot of these people had wars going on in their own countries and it was just terrible living conditions over there. Um, famine means that they had no food. Um, and their countries are so poor um, that they literally couldn't feed their families. There's also religious persecution, which means they couldn't practice the religion that they wanted to again. If you'll remember, we had a lot of colonists come over to America because they couldn't practice the religion they wanted to, and that's happening again. And then Europe is still really crowded. I told you guys a story about a German teacher who was like a really close talker and it was awkward. But she said that everyone in Germany is so used to being packed together that they're used to being so close. And some people just wanted room to breathe. So they moved to America to get more space. So who came over? This is uh, what you're seeing are actual pictures of immigrants coming into America. Um, so this would be what they looked like. Um, we have Germans, Irish, English, Italians, Russians, Polish, Mexican, Chinese, so many different people from many different backgrounds. And this picture cracks me up because you can see a lot of those different backgrounds in it, but you can also see some very, very creepy people. <laughs> now, we call people from Western Europe old immigrants, which is um, like England and France. So it's the countries in Europe that are closest to us. We call that, them old immigrants because they've been coming for a while. But the new immigrants are from Eastern Europe, so more of Russia and the ones that are farther away from us. Um, take a minute and look at this picture kind of closely. You might see a woman that will haunt your dreams tonight. Her eyes are piercing your soul right now. There she is. And then you'll also see a girl who looks like she's 80, but in the body of a seven-year-old. Oh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> All right, so how the heck did they get here? So. We have passage to the U.S. Um, would take someone's life savings. So if they wanted to come to the United States, um, they had to save every penny that they had to get over here because it was very expensive. And remember, they didn't have a lot of money in their countries that they came from. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, what would happen is they would send one person to America to work and save money. And then they would send that money back to their home country and try to slowly save up so they could bring more and more family members over. It was very hard to send an entire family all at one time. Um, the decks were very crowded on these ships and um, they came from all different countries. So these people that were traveling together couldn't really communicate with each other because they were from different countries. So life on the way over was kind of similar to the slave ships that we've talked about. Now they weren't chained up and in the bottom of the boat, but it was very dirty and rough conditions. A lot of them died on the way over. There were a lot of diseases. So it was similar um, to that, a very hard journey, but people wanted to come to America so badly that they would go through that. Um, this is a picture from the ship. Um, this is what someone had said. During the 12 days on the steerage, I lived in surroundings that offended every sense. Only the fresh breeze from the sea overcame the sickening odors. Everything was dirty, sticky, and disagreeable to the touch. Disease and death was not uncommon. So people would just die on the way over because they had diseases or they got sick on the way and there's no doctor. So like Dunk said, very awful on this boat over. You'll notice that people in this picture are all bundled up. When they were on top of the boat for 12 days, you know, it was freezing conditions. It was winter time. They're crossing the Atlantic Ocean. So it wasn't like this cruise ship where they could just lay out and relax. It was really miserable. So it sounds like that slave trade that we were talking about. 
Right. So picture this. You're on this disgusting boat for 12 days, right? And as you start to approach America, you see this huge statue. Uh, if you can guess what this statue is, um, scratch your... Nose. Nose. Don't yeah. pick your nose. Just no, scratch it. Scratch it. <laughs> then we know you're paying attention. Um, but hopefully you are scratching your nose and thinking, oh, it's the Statue of Liberty. When immigrants see this, they think, oh, I'm finally here. I'm finally going to have some freedom and have a better life for myself. So oftentimes they would cheer and get really excited when they saw the Statue of Liberty. Um, so you think, once you see this, that things are going to be better for you and your family and that things are just going to be wonderful now that you're in America. Um, and we get to um, Ellis Island. That's where they have to check in. And a lot of you have probably heard of this place. Maybe you visited it. But um, they would have to go through um, these checkpoints at this building called Ellis Island. Okay, now there are um, some procedures when they get here for these new immigrants. And six million immigrants have to go through Ellis Island as they come into our country, especially from 1900 to 1910. So six million is a ton of people that are going to all go right through this building. So when they get there, there are three steps that you have to do. And the first one is a medical examination. So they just want to make sure that you don't have any crazy diseases that you're bringing into the country and that you're not really sick. So they had inspectors in this building and they would um, have the authority to send you home. If they thought you looked sick or they thought you might have a disease, they're like, all right, we don't want you. You're going back to uh, your home country. So imagine you just spent 12 days getting here and they send you right back because you look sick. Now the thing is, it's not like these were legit doctors. I mean, they were, but they weren't the best doctors in the country. If you're a good doctor, you go work somewhere else. You don't work at Ellis Island. So these guys would take two minutes and ask you 32 questions super fast. And after 32 questions, they thought that they could figure out if you had a disease or not. Uh, and if they did, if they did think you had a disease, they would mark your shirt with some chalk. So they might put an X if they thought you had one kind of disease and a circle if they thought you had something else. If you were contagious, you were either shipped back, like San said, or you were quarantined. Quarantine means that you are put away in a room totally by yourself where you can't infect anyone else. A lot of times they would quarantine little kids because they thought that they could get over the disease faster. Um, but imagine how scary that would be if you're a five-year-old, you're pulled away from your parents, you don't speak the language, and now you have to live in this little room that kind of looks like a jail cell. It was terrifying for these little kids. Um, so the second procedure, after you get through the um, inspection of your health, you're going to wait in this hall, and that's what it, it looks like. Um, I imagine it's like, kind of like Six Flags, but you don't get to go on a roller coaster when you get to the end of it. It's just a terrible long line that you're waiting in forever. Um, and you are waiting in it for hours. Sometimes people are waiting there for days. Now you're going to line up according to language. So you can see there's kind of rows forming. Um, so everyone from like England would be in a row. Everyone from France would be in a row. That way when you get up to an inspector, he can try to communicate with you in your language. When you get up to the inspectors, um, they are going to ask you some questions and decide if you should stay or go. So they're like the final say. When you tell them your name, a lot of times if it's really complicated, they'll just Americanize it, which means they just shorten it and make it easier for them to say. They don't want to deal with your complicated foreign name, which is why we have a lot of people in our country named Smith, or Johnson because they probably had pretty crazy names when they came in through Ellis Island and they were changed. Um, Dunk and I actually did some research of our own names and we were floored that our, um, my maiden name, is it your maiden name? Mm -hmm. Our maiden names were, um, were changed when our families came over to America. So my maiden name is Hindley um, and they came from Sweden and I think it was Hindelowski or something like that instead of Hindley. Um, so they shortened it because they thought it was too crazy. And my old last name was Eltoff, uh, and this is ridiculous. <laughs> my real last name for my ancestors was Eltoffus Loss, which <laughs> I couldn't imagine going through school. I mean, Eltoffus Loss. Sounds like a dinosaur. It sounds like <laughs> a contagious disease. Uh, so good thing that they did shorten some of them. 
Uh, but immigrants weren't ever upset about it because they wanted to be in our country, so they just went with it. They're like, oh, okay. So it might be cool to go home tonight and ask your parents if they know if your names were changed or not when your ancestors came over. This is a picture of them leaving Ellis Island, right? Mm hmm Okay. So once you pass all the tests, um, you now have to go out into the world. You've passed all your three inspections. Um, but now the hard part really starts because you have to start completely fresh. These people didn't know anyone um, in the country. They didn't have a place to go. Um, but they were very excited to do this. Now once they finally <clears throat> found a place to live, it's oftentimes in a city. So New York um, grows in population because people don't have the money to travel too much farther from Ellis Island, which is New York. So we see a lot of immigrants just stay there. Um, some will travel to Chicago. We have a very high Polish population in Chicago. Um, and some to a couple other cities, but mainly New York. So two-thirds of immigrants are going to live in cities. It's just cheaper to live there. There's work because there's a lot of factories now. And as you know, farmers are getting screwed. So they, it's not like they want to go out and be farmers. Four-fifths of all immigrants are going to just stay right in New York. Now, when they settle um, in these cities, they kind of stay with the same type of people um, that are from their country. So that's why we see places pop up like Chinatown, Germantown, Little Italy, because they kind of all stayed together in one little clump. Yeah, and that makes sense. You want to be with the people that can speak your language. So this was a good thing because, like Jen said, they can speak their own language, but um, it kind of started a little bit of negative attitudes because they were separated and they stayed separated and they thought that other people were different and didn't want to get to know them and it just kind of started some negative attitudes. Now the housing they lived in was the worst. <laughs> it was really uncomfortable, super crowded, disgustingly dirty. For 120 rooms, um, they fit 1,200 immigrants. So um, that's just an obscene amount of people in these small, tiny little rooms. There was one bathtub available within three city blocks. So everyone who lived in um, those three blocks shared the same bathtub. So you can imagine that's disgusting in itself, but it's always busy, so you didn't always get a chance to take a bath. So people were very, very dirty. 60% of babies are going to die before they're a year old because it's so disease-ridden and disgusting. Um, so sometimes there's violence between these people. Um, so since they're separating themselves into their own little sections, um, they start to fight with each other because they can't understand each other and they think they don't understand each other's cultures. Um, and we see a lot of violence and gangs popping up. And this, um, that picture was the five points in New York. Oh, you don't have to. Okay. Um, but this is one area where it's kind of like the five-way stop that used to be in Crystal Lake. Now they're fixing it. Uh, but this is where, like, Irish and Russians and French um, and Italians all met sort of in the same place, and they would just fight with each other. Um, when they weren't fighting with each other, they had... Um Jobs. So this is why they stayed in the cities, because there was a lot of work there. Um, so we start to see assembly lines start, and workers are getting screwed, um, especially immigrants. So um, assembly lines are making them produce more goods um, faster, but they aren't treated very nicely. Um, they have very, very long hours. So think about, if you have a job right now, think about what that's like, um, and you have like a seven or eight hour day, and you're exhausted. Um, these immigrants would work 12 or most times more than that, um, seven days a week. They don't get any days off, no vacation, no sick time. If they're sick, they still have to come to work. Um, they get no unemployment and no workman's comp. So if you're working in a factory and your arm gets chopped off, that was your fault, okay? You're not going to get any money um, to help you with your medical bills for that. Yeah, and no time off for your arm falling off. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep coming back to work. Yeah. <laughs> Now, there are a lot of injuries because these machines are massive. Um, so <laughs> it's just very unsafe. It's just terrible to work there. Uh, I think we're, we're going to stop this right now um, and talk to you about the awful uh, injuries in a minute. So just click the next link. We talk too much. Yeah. <laughs>